you, I'm gonna walk you through one of the sessions I had with an amazing photographer here on the island, Nick Thornton. Usually on these uh, ski shoots and things, I'm taking the photographs or I'm taking the video. And it was really cool just to get out with somebody that knows what they're doing. And I was the athlete. So I try and adjust my board. Yeah! Woohoo! So I'll walk you through the day. I'll show you some example photos of kind of what happened through the day. And so let's get into it. You. Sweet. So yeah, early on in the day, I met up with Nick. We were going to have a session. We didn't have a real solid plan of what shots we were looking for or anything like that. Yeah, so he had a Nikon something or other. I don't know Nikons, I'm sorry. But uh, full frame, beautiful looking DSLR with a 100 to 400 f2.8 beautiful lens. <laughs> and I was pumped to have him bring that out to shoot today. Because if you know sports photography, you know that that is the lens that is just absolutely amazing because it captures the subject in such detail and just softens everything around it and it's and you can capture so many more photographs because it has that huge focal range from 400 all the way down to 100 so it was absolutely amazing to have that so we wanted to take advantage so we went on a little powder hunting uh expedition this was a little while ago when the snow was amazing but uh we went on a little powder hunting expedition so we both kind of know the mountain pretty well and wanted to check out some zones that might have allowed us to capture some cool shots. So a lot of it had been tracked out, but we found a couple cool spots. So the first one we went to was kind of off the trail a bit. You kind of had to sneak through some trees to get to it. And it was a real short pitch where you could uh, get a little bit of powder shots and things like that. And it hadn't been tracked out too much. Yeah, it's a nice little wide open run with some trees. So he was able to capture me from a long distance, not have to worry about the autofocus grabbing trees or anything through it or having to set the manual focus if that was the case. So he was able to use autofocus, use the whole focal length and set up way down the line. So that was a really good shot. And he went down there and I knew kind of the line I wanted to do. So as I started at the top, I knew I'd have to get some speed. There was a gap from one mogul to another that I really wanted to hit. And I hit it well, did really well. Got some good speed, good air, no fancy tricks on the air. I'm just happy to land them. Uh, landed super smooth, took a little left-hander, uh, carrying a lot of speed. <laughs> it doesn't show in the photos here, but carrying a lot of speed. And then uh, one of my skis just kind of hit a mogul underneath the powder and it was a little crunchy. And I just engaged every muscle in my body just to hold on to the, <laughs> the, uh, the shot and continue downhill without uh, landing on my side or face. Um, barely hold it together as you can see in the photos here, but uh, held it together just long enough to be able to have Nick capture some absolutely stunning like sequence of three or four shots just before I passed him. Yeah, then the next spot we wanted to go to, we wanted to kind of take advantage of the deep powder we had there. We had uh, a ton of snow for the last bunch of days. Again, it was tracked out a little bit, but there's still some real good pockets that we wanted to find and saw this one, I saw this one little pitch where it was like, there's these two trees, probably six feet apart. And then you can see like this roller of powder going through there. So it kind of just looked like this nice little couple pillows that you could just go right through and it would just be like this amazing face shot. So I told him and he agreed to head around and find a nice spot to be looking uphill. Cause I told him, I was like, I'm gonna hit this thing top speed. <laughs> and the snow's gonna go flying. And as he's going around to set up, I'm looking at this little uh, couple of trees I got to go through and I'm looking at that snow a little closer and I'm like, I, I don't know what's under that snow. <laughs> it could be powder, but that's a weird way for powder to form. <laughs> like there's not a lot of wind getting through that section and I was just really confused at, at how that was looking. And uh, then I started to think like, well, there might be something under that. I got to be really careful about how I hit this, but he set up with this beautiful camera um, going for it, but I got to be prepared for anything. And lucky I was because I went through and I remember hitting the first little drop and then feeling my skis hit something underneath the powder, which could have been a log buried a little deeper. It was still covered in quite a bit of snow or it could have just been a hard roller of something. But anyways, the shots turned out <laughs> kind of kind of odd. If you're a skier and you see these sequence of shots, you're kind of like, hmm, what happened there? <laughs> and what happened was I hit that hard thing. So the very first shot shows kind of the ski tips kind of piercing through the snow 
and my knuckles, white knuckled <laughs> under the gloves, just like right about a foot away from the tips of the skis, which means my legs were compressing. And I can tell you that my legs and knees were right at my knuckles. <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of room to absorb anymore. So I was going to probably the maximum speed I could do it. And I did everything I could to try and maintain my composure and form just for the photos. But sequence does look a little funny if you are somebody that skis powder. <laughs> and that's why. So I held it together and I'm super pumped I did. But uh, that was a little tricky shot for sure. But yeah, that was the day. I just wanted to give you guys a kind of a little behind the scenes of, of what it was like to be the athlete in one of these shots. And then some of the things I learned from the day are just the way he set up for shot was, was, very, was very interesting compared to what I did. And one of the things I learned is instead of setting up for shots kind of on the side or way downhill, he would set up kind of, we'd decide where the shot was gonna be and he would go straight fall line from the prime shot we were aiming for. So I told him on the first shot there that I wanted to kind of air over this mogul, maybe throw some style in there, but, uh, but air over this mogul. And then there was this nice little powder field where I could get a couple good turns in before going past him. And that was really an important thing is that he's shooting straight on to me instead of kind of shooting at the side. I think the autofocus system had a lot better time doing that. And it was the same thing with that uh, powder pillow that didn't turn out to be so powdery. Uh, it still was, it was still two feet of powder, but underneath that was pretty stiff stuff, <laughs> whatever it was. Uh, but anyway, he was straight on with me. He knew the line I was taking and he was so great at just finding that spot to shoot uphill, to capture me, to be in the sharpest focus I could imagine with one of those lenses. So he's completely motivated me to, yeah, get some more work and find uh, a nice telephoto lens that's either the 70 to 200 or the uh, the full 100 to 400 one day because those shots just turned out amazing and it was great. Again, uh, follow Nick. I'll put his Instagram down below. He does a lot of nature shots and landscapes. Yeah, we'll get out again and, uh, and hopefully I can get him. That was great and really, really happy to do it. So yeah, cheers. Yep. See you in the next one.